CN. Outside a preserved Tang Dynasty McDonald's. Now this gentleman behind me is somebody who I identify with very much. Somebody who, at the age of 27, went on an adventure. This is a world-renowned traveler from history who traveled to India to retrieve sacred texts. Does that sound familiar? Well, yes. If you know something about China, you will know one of the great masterpieces of Chinese literature is called Journey to the West, the story of Tang Song, a monk who, with the aid of the Monkey King, travels to the West to retrieve ancient Buddhist texts and restore Chinese civilization. This guy here, Xuanzang, he was the main inspiration for this story, a real life person who did this. Due to war and strife in the North, there was a travel ban. This man against all odds defied this ban and traveled for I think something like 16 or 17 years, bringing back hordes of Buddhist texts, reviving the religion and becoming hugely influential in Chinese Buddhism. Coincidentally, I booked this trip before knowing this story and then last week I was reading my book on Chinese history and this story came up just last week, can't believe it. Against all odds, including a trek through the desert where his water bottle was spilled, no horse, starving and thirsty. He was picked up by an Indian monk and taken care of. He returns back to China to the welcome of Emperor Taizong. Eventually, this pagoda, the Wild Goose Pagoda, was built in commemoration of his efforts and later was restored by Empress Wu Zetian. And I had no idea that this real life character, which I was inspired by, was um, the actual inspiration for Journey to the West, a story which I've enjoyed before in my Chinese language learning. Journey to the West has been the inspiration for a lot of modern storytelling as well. One of the most famous ones being the Dragon Ball anime series, and it follows the classic Campbellian archetypes, which makes it an absolute raucous adventure. Right, not being funny, but why does a big touristy place like this have nowhere to eat? By nowhere I mean they have KFC, but really now, there's a few snack places, a lot of them are shut, there's desserts and stuff, look there's some cakes or something, but you know a restaurant or two wouldn't go amiss, I've been walking for 10 minutes and there's nothing. Okay I see something that says restaurant bar. But it's going to be shut, isn't it? Who's taking bets? Yeah, it's shut. Goodness me, I'm hungry. 
Converse. Don't make me go to Burger King. All right, in time department store. There has to be some restaurants inside. So that's my next destination. Seriously though, I was planning on doing a full video on this place as it's um, highlighted as a key attraction in this city. But um, for me, it's basically, you know, one of those made up cities with uh, pseudo traditional architecture, which is great. I love all that stuff, but there's nothing here. It's a lot of flash, not much substance. I can't believe it. I've come all this way and because of the slim pickings in this area for food, I've ended up eating Jiangsu food because it's the only restaurant that's decent around here. I live in Jiangsu. Anyway, here's the shirt at all, otherwise known as Lion's Head, a delicacy in Yangzhou where I live.